On August 21, 2002, Iran unveiled six new major defense achievements on the National Defense Industry Day in the presence of President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Defense Minister Brigadier General Ahmad Vahidi and Minister of Communications and Information Technology Reza Taghipur were also present at the ceremony, each lauding the successes and stressing that Iran is a peace-loving nation that has the capability and preparedness to fend for itself in the event of a strike by its sworn enemies. In recent years, Iran has attained self-sufficiency in producing essential military equipment and systems. On this Iran today, we'll have a look at Iran's defense industry's accomplishments and why they have become so important and strategic. Iran's defense industry has been able to produce 1,436 different products to be used by the Air Force, Navy, and the ground force. The industry rolled out its most recent accomplishments, a total of 192 produced over the past year in the August exhibition. Of the 192, six were introduced as the most significant. The Armita Flying Laboratory, the Bonyan 4 Marine Engine, the ARAS tactical vehicle, the Vafa mortar launcher, as well as Shahed tapping and positioning system, and on top of them all, the fourth generation of the Fateh 1D-110 missile. وزارت دفاع نسل جدیدی از موشک‌های خودش رو با موفقیت تست کرد. The Defense Ministry has tested its new generation of missiles. Their precision is their most outstanding feature. Making missiles that are powerful and fast and have decent precision used to be our main objectives. But now this new generation of missiles has given the Defense Ministry added strength. All land and air targets can be hit with high accuracy. They are the new generation of mid-range Fateh 110 missiles. The technology to make a missile like the Fateh is in the possession of only a few countries, with each keeping their cards very close to their chests. Iranian experts say they have designed and manufactured the Fateh on their own from scratch, and on August 4, successfully test-fired it. The Fateh 1D-110 is among the most sophisticated and precise surface-to-surface -surface ballistic missiles. Running on combined solid fuel, it's buttressed Iran's missile capability over the past decade to a great extent. These missiles can hit all regional and land targets and those 300 kilometers offshore in the Persian Gulf or the Oman Sea. Tehran turned to missiles to deal with an immediate wartime need after Iraq's 1980 invasion. It used missiles against Iraq from 1985 until three years later when the war ended. Since then, Tehran has steadily expanded its missile arsenal. It's also invested heavily in its own industries and infrastructure to lessen its dependence on unreliable foreign suppliers. Iran has invested heavily in missiles, but that's nothing unusual in the world today. The Fateh precision missile met that requirement, and I think is as good as first, second, and third best missiles manufactured abroad. Since the Islamic Revolution, Iran has faced several rounds of U.S.-led sanctions, especially a ban on military hardware sales. As a result, it could not obtain what it needed from other countries. On the order of the leadership and with a burning desire to strengthen its defenses, it launched a long and expensive program to build the things it needed here at home. Since then, Iran has managed to manufacture different types of missiles, from Katyushas and artillery rockets to ballistic missiles of different ranges. 
اخیرا کارایی که انجام شده یعنی از ساخت موشک the things they have done recently starting with the production of the shahab and then to zelzal and even the fatah 110 that has been test fired and is about to become mass produced are all aimed at buttressing our aerial deterrence as you know of every hundred dollars spent in the defense industries 75 dollars of it are spent on making missiles bombs and military planes in other words they are spent primarily on air defense of the rest around 15 dollars are spent in the navy and the rest on ground warfare equipment keeping in mind that it's going to be a while before Iran is able to make its own advanced aircraft, though it's already started the process to do it, decided to concentrate more on its missile industry to make up for its inability to make advanced top-of-the-line fighter aircraft. Given the fact that Iran uh, has been going through different types of sanctions for the last 30 years or so, and uh, most of the Western uh, arms manufacturers uh, don't sell a weapon to Iran and um, given the fact that Iran went through eight years of a war that was imposed on it uh, from Iraq uh, what we have in, in Iran is quite unique because most of the arms that are uh, used in the Iranian armed forces are made in Iran the, the high percentage over 90 percent of uh, the arm that is used uh, uh, by different uh, sections of Iranian army are actually manufactured in Iran and that's quite unique uh, internationally. We have very few countries that uh, indigenously, uh, domestically uh, produce this level of uh, armament. Everybody knows that the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, did focus on uh, defense uh, uh, a strategy uh, because Iran has been a target of uh, you know many threat and uh, since the beginning of the Islamic Republic of Iran within three decades uh, Iran did develop and uh, uh, a very important uh, uh, missiles uh, uh, long term uh, uh, long uh, range uh, missiles and uh, did develop also a very sophisticated air defense system and also uh, the Navy, the Iranian Navy uh, had a, a very dramatic development, very important development in the last uh, uh, decade, in the last 10 years. Oil and gas rich Iran enjoys a strategic geographical position in the Middle East region and has for years been kept on its toes by the foreign forces presence in this part of the world. Apart from that, the security threats from the U.S. and NATO's military presence in Iraq and Afghanistan over the past decade have prompted Iran to beef up its defenses, such as putting up an impenetrable missile shield to repel or retaliate any attack. There is no other region in the world compared to the Middle East uh, in terms of the number of conflicts and wars uh, during the last uh, 20 years. Uh, the most uh, violent wars have happened here. Uh, some of the violent actions are still are going on in the region. And you see in all of them, uh, with no exception, there is an external force involved. And this external force, of course, use its local proxies or the fear of these uh, local proxies and also their wealth to somehow uh, perpetuate its uh, per presence, military speaking, in the region. The other problem we have is Iran's critical security situation. Therefore, in such circumstances, after a country establishes its military security, it's going to have to supply its need for weapons. Because we are facing threats from the east, west, north, and southwest, we need to constantly upgrade and update our weapons and equipment.
Most of the threats we are facing come from powers outside of this region, both Israel and the United States. Iran is now facing a constant threat from the U.S. and Israel, both nuclear-armed and both belligerent. If you look at the Zionist regime's 60-year history, you'll see it's been invading its neighbors on a regular basis, from the time it was established until now. They haven't let five years go by without launching a war and starting bloodshed. So that's historically typical of the Zionists, not all the Jews. The invasion of Egypt, of Jordan, of Syria, Lebanon, which was in fact an attack on Hamas in 2004. They're waging war for years. As for warmongering, American leaders are in the lead. There has been no single American president since World War II who wasn't involved in at least one war during his tenure. There is almost no American president during the post-war, uh, I mean post-World uh, post War II era, I mean from 1945 thus far, that has not been engaged in at least one or two military uh, action outside the uh, United States. Uh, look at the President Obama. Uh, he has not... Uh, launched uh, invasion of other countries, but uh, he, his administration is involved in a very militaristic adventure and move that is called uh, drowns against the ordinary people uh, 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 in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Somalia, in, in Yemen. The last uh, uh, few weeks and so far until today, uh, every day we see in the newspaper that the, the Israeli government is thinking to invade Iran, to make an aggression and to make a strike against Iran. Yes or no, there is a conflict. I have always said that all options are on the table. We have imposed the most comprehensive the hardest hitting sanctions that the Iranian regime has ever faced. We haven't just talked about it, we have done it. Rest assured, we will take no options off the table. The U.S. and its allies have never been short of excuses to ratchet up the pressure on Iran and threaten it with military action, especially after their hands were cut off from Iran's vast natural resources in the wake of the Islamic Revolution. And every time they came up with a new excuse, the biggest one of all, Iran's nuclear energy program and the relentless war of wards against the country over its refusal to give it up. But there'd be no doubt, America is determined to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon and I will take no options off the table to achieve that goal. So if there's one thing that stands out clearly in the Middle East today, it's that Israel and America stand together. As part of their scaremongering tactics, the U.S. and Israel have explicitly threatened Iran with war, saying all options are on the table with regards to Iran. And aside from the rhetoric of war, they have spearheaded and encouraged several economic sanctions against the country launched an extensive media and cyber attack and orchestrated the assassination of a number of Iranian nuclear scientists, all aimed at slowing or stalling the country's nuclear program. The United States of America and the adversary and the enemies of Iran are aware of this and they know that they know that Iran will not invade any country, but if Iran will be invaded, uh, the reply will be uh, very hard and it will provoke a lot of damage uh, in, the, uh, in, in the region. Uh, 
uh, of course, uh, if Iran is invaded by America, there are many American interests and American military bases in the, in the Gulf. And uh, of course, Iran will not uh, uh, stay uh, silent uh, toward those uh, uh, targets. Almost every day, if not uh, every hour, you see that the military option is on the table and um, war games about uh, attacking Iran uh, are pronounced by American and Israelis and no nation can be inattentive to these threats. Uh, the threats are of two types, I have to say. One is uh, very direct, uh, very, uh, I have to say, naked. Uh, like uh, what you see from uh, Netanyahu, and some of them are very indirect, uh, some of them are indirectly designed to have proxy wars, and uh, they are engaged in many, many uh, middle ground uh, military activities against Iran. As far as Iran, it looks like most of what the Americans have been threatening to do was hot air all words and almost no action. But what prevents the world's biggest military powers from translating their words into action? And I think one reason <clears throat> we have not uh, seen an attack on Iran, given the fact that Israeli government officials, uh, US government officials, threaten Iran almost weekly, threaten to attack Iran militarily weekly. The fact that we haven't seen that attack materialize is exactly that. They realize that Iran is basically capable of defending itself. They realize that Iran is uh, working in terms of being able to uh, compete with the types of weapons that they have. And they realize that Iran has had successes. And that's one of the main reasons they have not attacked Iran so far. Nobody can deny the uh, role of Iran uh, as a, uh, a important player in, in the region, he, Iran, uh, Iran is very important uh, countries in the region and has also a role to play it, uh, to, 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 to play that role in, in the right way must be strong and uh, it's normal. Uh, if you prepare yourself to defend your country, is nobody uh, uh, can blame you. Uh, everybody uh, knows that Iran paid a lot, a lot of its economy to build up that system. <coughs> but I think uh, it was in the right way uh, because this force in Iran, it's not an aggression, it's not a threat, it's only deterrence, deterrence to any countries may, uh, may think to invade Iran or to attack Iran or to, uh, to, uh, to make an aggression against Iran. The defense ministry today is leading the way in fields like nanotechnology, aerospace, and information technology because these symbolize power in today's world. As an independent nation with huge natural resources and intellectual capital, Iran has proved over the years it should be taken seriously. Yet its achievements in defense technology are either ignored, viewed with suspicion, or dismissed as exaggerated. We have had in recent memory, we have had instances uh, that uh, Iran has shown how well it can protect itself. Uh, as you know, a few months ago we had the issue of the U.S. drone that was, uh, that had entered Iranian space and Iranian government, Iranian military was able to uh, basically capture this drone and uh, put it uh, away from the control of uh, the U.S. Um, military personnel. Uh, that's a sign that uh, Iran's uh, advances in this area, at least, is quite uh, extensive being able to basically take over the control of the drone and, and um, take it away from the system that is uh, producing it and, and directing it is quite a significant uh, 
uh, achievement. To tell the world Iran's never going to bow down to external threats, President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has called on Iranian scientists and experts to redouble their efforts in deterring any threat to Iran's security and territorial integrity. We have to get to a point where our defense capability can stop all the bullying powers in their tracks or repel them. We can do that. We need to get in on this process, a process that turns knowledge into a technology, turns the technology into an industry and changes that into a system to be used by the public and the armed forces. This is a process that helps us generate deterrence capability that can support our diplomacy so that we can pursue our national goals in different arenas. In other words, to try and keep the area around the country calm and further its goals. Iran is looking for a completely indigenized defense industry. It's already scored several good results in all three areas of air, sea and land. شلمچه که در داخل تولید شد و به تولید انبوه رسید و وارد نیروهای مسلح شد The Mirsad and Shalamche mid-range missiles have already been mass-produced domestically and put at the defense ministry's disposal and now we are planning to manufacture other missiles and anti-aircraft bases They'll be ready in the next few months, hopefully we also hope to produce a generation of long-range missiles that will, God willing, be ready soon. Since the Safavid era, about 500 years ago, Iran has neither attacked another nation nor threatened to do so. Yet it has been bullied, invaded and occupied many times over. Invasions that led to Iran giving up huge chunks of its territory to the occupying powers. In, in recent memories, we do not have even one case of Iranian government attacking another country. Uh, the last time um, Iran engaged in a war, started a war, no one really can remember. It goes back a few hundred years ago. Uh, uh, unlike Iran's opponents, the United States is fighting a new war every few years. Israelis are fighting a new war every few months. <coughs> they have shown that uh, in terms of international relations, they are quite aggressive, attacking other countries, occupying other countries, killing uh, innocent civilians. It's basically something that the armies of the United States and Israeli government engage in almost every day. Iranian government, Iranian military has not done these type of aggressive activities for as long as anybody can remember. با پیشرفت صنعت دفاعی رو برای کشورگشایی نمیخوایم برای سلطه برای همسایه ها نمیخوایم we are not expanding our defense industries in order to impose domination on other nations or occupy them or rule the world we don't aim to bully others our purpose first and foremost is to defend ourselves our land our existence and also to defend humanity Again, not a tool of invasion, but as a deterrent.